Welcome to 10 Excel Functions Business Students Should Know, Part 1. Part 1 of this video will define and discuss the following Excel functions. Aggregate, Round, EO Month, E-Date, and Workday. The aggregate function allows users to summarize values while providing the ability to ignore things such as errors, hidden cells, and more. To use the aggregate function, first type an equal sign and then begin typing aggregate. And Excel will show you the functions that correspond with the letters typed. Note how the formula structure also appears in the Excel formula bar. After clicking on the word aggregate, the full word appears in a cell with one open round bracket. Users type their options for the formula structure within these brackets. Remember to close your bracket when finished. As you move through the formula, options for the function appear in boldface when it's time for them to be selected. The first option, titled function number, provides users a list of the different functions of the aggregate formula. Let's say that I want to find the sum total for meetings under column B. In this case, because I would like the sum, I choose function number nine. Each new option is triggered by typing a comma after the previous option. Because a comma was typed after choice nine, the next option, a list of ignore features, appears in boldface. These ignore features in the aggregate function are what make it useful. For example, perhaps one of the rows in my worksheet was hidden. Then I would choose the option number five, ignore hidden rows. But in this case, I only want the sum, so I will choose four, ignore nothing. After you type a comma after option number four, array appears in boldface. Here, users will choose the range of cells they want to include for the sum total. In this case, I want a sum total for the range between cell B6 through B23. So I type each cell and place a colon between them. Note how the cells I enter into the formula appear highlighted on the worksheet. Now close the bracket with a parentheses and press enter. And the sum of the selected rows appears. The round function allows users to round their values to a desired number of digits. For example, let's say that after calculating the total salary, I want to round it by two digits. To use the round function, begin typing an equal sign and then the word round appears. As mentioned, a drop down menu appears. Click the word round to open the bracket for writing the formula. The first option in boldface of the round function is number. I type B5 for the cell that I want to round. Follow B5 with a comma to open the next function in boldface. Number of digits. This option is asking for the number of digits I want to round the value up. Because I want to round the total salary by two digits, I type the number two. Now close the bracket and press enter. After we press enter, we see the total salary is now rounded by two digits. The EO month or end of month function allows users to calculate the date associated with the end of a month based on a specified date. To use the end of month function, start with an equal sign and then begin typing EO month and click EO month to open the function in a bracket for your formula. The first option for the formula is titled start date. This option is asking for users to type the start date with which they would like to calculate the end of month four. To begin, I type cell A4. Next, type a comma to activate the next option for the EO month function, the number of months you want to jump. In this case, I'm going to go with the current month, so my choice is zero. Close the bracket and press enter. 
the calculation now shows the last day of the end of the month for the date in cell A4. In case the calculation for a formula appears wrong, always check the formatting box to ensure your format is set to the correct one. In this case, I want to use short date. So I choose the short date format. Use what's called the fill handle in the bottom right corner of a cell to drag a formula into the cells below it. By using the fill handle, the formula is applied to the cells below it. Here we see the end of months for all dates listed in the cells under column A. What if you want to find the last date for the end of the next month? Type A4 again, followed by a comma, but this time type 1 for one month forward from the listed date. Close the bracket and press return. Here we see the end of the month dates for one month forward. Using the fill handle, you can once again drag the formula down into the other cells. If you want to go backward in months, you can type a negative one in the formula for the EO month function. The eDate function allows users to calculate specified dates for the past or future. Let's say I want to find the exact date 12 months after the date listed in cell A4, 1, 1, 22. First type the equal sign, then eDate. The eDate's first option asks for the start date. Here I'll type cell A4 followed by a comma. The second option asks for the number of months into the past or future I want to calculate. In this case, I want to type 12 because I want to calculate A4's date 12 months into the future. Next, close the bracket and press enter. After pressing enter, here we see the newly calculated date of 1123, which is 12 months from the original date of 1122. Use the fill handle in cell B4 to drag the formula down to the other cells in order to see all dates in column A projected 12 months into the future. You can also calculate selected dates for the past by typing a negative sign in front of the selected number of months. Here we want the date in cell A4 calculated 12 months prior. Here we see the eDate function provided a new date that is 12 months prior from the date in cell A4. The workday function allows users to calculate future dates without including weekends or holidays. Start with an equal sign and then type workday. Note that choosing the international version or INTL is sometimes considered more flexible because it considers international weekends and holidays. Let's say I want to find the date seven business days from the date listed in cell A4. The workday function should only show seven business days into the future from the date in cell A4 and exclude weekends and holidays. To begin, once the bracket is open, the first option in the workday function asks for the start date. Here I'll type cell A4 for the selected date to forecast seven business days ahead and follow it with a comma. The next option in the workday function asks for the number of days. Here I'll type seven because I want the date seven business days from the date listed in cell A4. The next option asks for the information regarding weekends. A drop down menu appears. I'll choose one for Saturdays and Sundays. Finally, the last option in the workday function asks for holidays. These are the holidays to include in your workday calculation. So here I'll type A16, close the bracket and press return. Here we see the workday for seven days into the future. Because we're checking just June, use the fill handle to drag the formula down to see seven business days from 622. Now let's check for accuracy. Let's select June to see if the date is correctly forecasted seven business days from the start date of 6 
If we refer to the calendar on the right, we see the 13th of June falls on a Monday. Note the Juneteenth holiday falls on a weekend, therefore we can shade out the weekend days. Yes, the 22nd of June falls on a Wednesday and is seven work days after 6-13-22. I hope this video has been helpful. Be sure to check out part two of 10 Excel functions business students should know. Have a great day. Thank you.